Welcome campers. In today's video, we're going to be installing some new leaf springs and coil springs onto our 1996 Jeep Cherokee. Stay tuned. The leaf springs we're putting in are a three and a half inch heavy duty leaf pack from Old Man Emu. That is the part number to them. And I will be putting a link to the leaf springs in the description below for you guys. The leaf springs I have on the Jeep now are a four and a half inch spring from Rough Country. They're from when I did the lift kit about five or six years ago on it. And they are definitely past their life. So I think the, uh, the old man emu kit the three and a half inch leaf with the one and a half inch jks shackle should uh give me enough lift to definitely support all the weight that we take on our trips i will be comparing the leaf springs on the table after i get these out a couple days before the replacement you're going to want to hit every single bolt with some pb blaster or wd-40 some type of penetrating oil so it'll make your life easier on removing all of the bolts needed and to uh, break loose any possible rusty bolts you have. After letting the PB Blaster soak into all the bolts, I did pre-loosen a lot of these bolts just to make the swap a little bit faster and easier. One thing against these leaf springs is they do not come with bushings in them, but that can be a good thing because you could pick the bushings you want. And the bushings I went with were Daystar brand polyurethane bushings. It comes with the bushings for the little eye and the big eye on the leaf springs plus rebuildable bushings for your shackles on the rear of the Jeep. And it does come with a little packet of grease to help them install into the leaf springs easier, but I don't think that's enough. So I'm gonna use my own grease for it and it shouldn't be a problem. And I will put a link to these in the, in the description below just to make your lives a little bit easier. So I do not need the bushings that go into the shackles because those are actually a uh, new JKS shackles that I put on I want to say a couple months ago and they already have polyurethane bushings in them so they are pretty much brand new still but I am going to grease these up completely I'm going to grease the shaft the inside and outside of the bushing just to make pushing into the eyes of the leaf spring a lot easier for you Perfect, now that these are greased, I am gonna um, start pressing them into the leaf springs. Just to make it a little easier too, I am gonna grease each eyelet of the leaf springs, just to make it so pushing the bushing into it will make it a little, it well, it should make it a lot easier pushing it in there. All right, so it wasn't really gonna work out on the table. I didn't have the right leverage. So my plan is to, uh, I put it on these blocks, I'm just going to put a piece of wood there to shield it. I'm going to give it a couple hits. And there we go. It's in. Awesome. So that worked out perfect for the larger eye. So now I'll do that for the smaller one. Actually, I didn't need it. Those just pushed in there with no issues. So, uh, awesome. Now it's time to do the second one, and then we will get to removing all of the old leaf springs and U-bolts. All right, you guys, since I already uh, put PB Blaster on everything and pre, um, I guess, loosened every bolt, I'm just going to pop off these leaf springs super quick. Uh, first thing is I'm going to start with the bolt up here and on the shackle and then loosen all the U-bolts. And then from there, um, once I loosen the other side, I'll just lower the axle down onto the wood and the jack stand to hold it in place. And then it is time to put in the new, um, what, leaf spring. Yeah, put in the new leaf spring. And then from there, um, once I pull off this old leaf spring, 
I'll actually compare it to the new one just to see the difference in arc and uh, just to show you guys the quality difference between this old rough country spring and the old man emu spring. So now that everything's off the leaf, just remove the leaf spring and you should be good to go. Man, these leaves needed replaced a while ago. The bushing or the metal sleeve for the bushing fell right out of the end. So that is not good. But you can just tell the difference between these two, honestly. It has the little rubber plastic spacers in between each leaf to help with, uh, I'm guessing, like creaking and everything like that. They're a lot tighter. And it does come with this helper leaf on the bottom just to make it to handle those heavier weights a lot easier. You can just tell too, the thickness of the leaves themselves is slightly larger so to help handle that, uh, that heavier weight. But now that it's uh, out, I am going to um, put the new leaf back in the Jeep and uh, tighten it up and then get started on the other side. And uh, while you paint your U-bolt plates, just to make them look nice and fresh, you might as well hit some parts of the axle that are pretty much impossible or really hard to hit while it's bolted underneath the vehicle. Alright, so after the paint is dried on your axle, uh, it is time to bolt in. The new leaf spring and i figured to make removing the bolt that goes into the body to make it a little easier to remove in the future just put some anti-seize on it and uh, just torque it down to whatever specs that they suggest and uh, i'll put on the screen the torque specs that they suggest for this front bolt and for the rear shackle bolt Do not get this stuff on you. It's like the worst stuff ever to get off. It just gets everywhere. All right, that is a lot. <laughs> well, that bolt was in. That that was a little hard. Not to, not gonna lie. But it's time to just get in the shackle bolt, get it all tight, and. Uh, Move on to the other side. All right, you guys, so once you get the axle lined up onto the leaves, put your U-bolt plate on there. And these are the U-bolts I got. They are from Barnes four-wheel drive. Uh, I will put a link in the description to them if you have a Ford 8.8, .8, or I will check if they have any uh, Dana 35 or Chrysler eight and a quarter u-bolts if they do i'll have all those links in the description for you guys even along with their u-bolt plate the ones i did buy were a little bit too long so what i'm gonna have to do is once i get them snug on there i'm gonna have to take a uh a cut wheel on the grinder and just chop off some of the threads so i have about three quarters of an inch above the bolts so once you get the u-bolts on there all uniform get them as tight as you can with your fingers um, if you have shorter u-bolts what you do is you just lower the vehicle down onto its own weight on a set of jack stands or whatever and then from there you tighten the u-bolts as tight as you can with a wrench or with a socket and then from there you do the torque wrench to 150 foot pounds that's at least what Barnes says for these u-bolts you put them each down to 150 foot pounds and then you do it in a crisscross pattern just to evenly tighten them so you don't uh, off center them or tighten one side too much so you just do it in an x and then uh, once you get them torqued down to 150 foot pounds in an x pattern on its own weight you should be good to go so i'm gonna take a zip disc cut these off and then i will get to that point and uh, i'll bring you guys back in all right so after going through about half a dozen of uh, your favorite Harbor Freight cutting wheels. 
it's time to uh, double check the bolts make sure they're tight make sure everything li lines up again and then from there it's a uh, get it as snug as possible and then hit it with the torque wrench Well, once you get all your U-bolts to that click, that means they are up to spec. The 180 foot-pounds, not 150. But you are done. Just jack up the vehicle, put the tires on it, and uh, let's see how it looks. This is how the Jeep's looking with the old man emu leaves. With the three and a half inch leaves, and then I guess it is a JKS one inch shackle. It gives you an inch with the XJ it's sitting pretty level everything's perfect now I'm just waiting for the shipment of a uh, metal cloak four and a half inch coils for the front second the FedEx guy gets here those will go in and uh, we'll be good to go Alright you guys, so the plan is to use a uh, set of spring compressors on each coil or you know use a set on a coil spring and then I'm going to use the jack to jack up one side to open it on the other side that I'm using the coil spring compressors on just to make removing the coil springs and installing the new ones extremely easy. So uh, let's do this. Alright, I got one side out, now I'm going to do the other side and uh, I don't run bump stops in the front. I don't really need them. I don't flex that hard. The tire or the shock will bottom out before I need a bump stop. So the the cans that hold the bump stops, just to make life easier in the future, I'm gonna cut about three inches with the Sawzall. Just cut three inches of the bump stop can just to make installing the new metal cloak springs easier because the metal cloak springs are actually longer than a standard coil spring so that's my plan just to make the install a lot easier on myself awesome FedEx truck popped on by so let's see what we got these are the four and a half inch dual rate coils for DJ LJ XJ Got some cool stickers. Individually packaged. Yeah, those look clean. Yeah, let's uh, compare these to the uh, original coil because these definitely look longer. Yeah, I'd say they're about four inches longer they're a little uh, the coils are definitely uh, more space in between them I guess they're uh, I'm not entirely sure they might be a softer rate just to have a smoother ride all right you guys that's how it's looking so far with the one metal cloak coil on that side now let's check out this side it's looking good while it was all out I put a coat of paint in there I think when I do do the uh, do do, uh, when I replace the the control arms with the metal cloak arms, I'm gonna do the brake lines at the same time, just because they're six year old brake lines. But now from here, I'm just putting on the shocks, putting the air box back in, just doing the spring retainers and the sway bar. Then the tires will go on, and we are done. All right guys, we're all done. Got the leaf springs put in yesterday with new U-bolts and everything. Got the coil springs done today. It's sitting exactly how I wanted it. I was kind of scared that the coil springs were gonna sit a little higher than the leafs in the rear, but it's sitting level. So now it's time to take it for a test drive, see how it feels. I already know it's gonna be light years better than my old six-year-old rough country setup. So let's take it for a spin. Um, I'll give you guys an update in six to eight months to a year on how it's doing. 
Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions or if I did anything that uh, was kind of weird, comment down below. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next adventure. It's time to shower up, get some food in me and a couple trail sodas. Have a good one, guys.